Welcome to the final video in the Super Bandit build series, video number five. We're wrapping this aircraft up. We're going to be doing an engine test run later in this video. We've got lots to do, so let's get busy and back at it. Last video, we finished off with just getting our engine installed, our tanks, our bypass, that stuff's done. Next thing that I'm kind of focusing on is the nose door servo, which has to mount in this area. Um, it's Friday night right now, and I kind of want to get this plane wrapped up pretty much by tomorrow. And uh, what I need to do is make sure we get all of our gluing and stuff done. So I'm going to work on my servo mount here. We're using the same servo that we used on the mains, which is the uh, MKS HV69. We've got our uh, engine stuff kind of figured out there, and we've also got our s -Bec as well too, which is going to be our main power source, actually our, our basically our power source for this entire aircraft. So lots to do in this video. Let's get cooking. All right, previously, I don't think I showed this, but I glued a piece of G10 on the door there. And the point of that is that's the mount for our door operation system. So we're going to sand that down as we need to, but uh, that is where our arm is going to be mounted to. Okay, so one of the final things electronic wise that I'm doing here is just getting everything laid out so we can confirm that everything works as it should. So in previous episodes, we've talked about our receiver setup. We're using a primary, a clone, all that stuff. We've got uh, some of our outputs on the cortex, some of them on the primary, only one left on the uh, the actual receiver. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this now is I'm setting up our SBEC 30. So we're going to have one battery going into the SBEC 30, and then this is going to feed our control electronics on the airplane. As this plugs into the SBEC 30, we'll have another lead that comes off that goes into the turbine. So that's how the power system is going to work on this uh, the setup. So what I was checking here was on the SBEC 30, we've got one lead that goes into the EXT port of our primary receiver. So that's plugged in and this is acts as an expander. So the SBEC 30 has EXT1, EXT2. Those two ports are expandable um, or settable, sorry. And we've got our turbine uh, telemetry, which is our Zykoi unit here. And that is running off of our uh, data relay module, of course, and that is going into EXT1, and everything is working as it should. I'll show you that in a second. We've got our M speed sensor, which is the pitot tube going in the nose of the aircraft, and that is plugged into EXT2, which is also working. So, from our jetty radio, if we go timers and sensors, sensor logging setup, as soon as I plug these guys in, we now have our M speed sensor. Uh, we've got our SBEC 30, which is there and we've got our turbine as well. So we've got all that stuff set up here and all of our telemetry is working correctly. So we got our front door servo installed. That looks good. Obviously painted the, uh, the mount and everything black, so that's perfect. So everything's pretty tight in here, but we uh, once we get this arm installed and our linkage coming down, it will be nice and off-centered from the, the gear leg. So it's all designed very nicely in this area to have a little bit of room and everything. So very, very well designed. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our pitot tube installed. And the reason for the pitot tube installation is we want to glue in our battery tray. So our pitot tube, uh, when we were building this aircraft, we made the hole already in the nose for the pitot tube. So we're gonna get that installed uh, in the nose, the, uh, the silicone uh, line here runs to wherever we're going to put our sensor. But uh, we want to get that installed because our battery tray here, these are our wood battery trays. Uh, they are available on our website. We've got two different sizes. Only one of them is on the website right now. We've got a smaller one. But uh, this one holds pretty much all of the, uh, the larger size batteries, uh, whether it's a 5,000 or 3,300 milliamp. And you can stack them like that as well too. So cool battery trays. Uh, they're wood, they come flat packed and uh, put some Velcro around there and it works amazing. So anyways, those are available on our website. So we're going to be mounting the battery tray right in the nose area right there. And we've already got our single XT60 plug-in right there. So that is all laid out and perfect but we need to get that pitot tube installed before we glue down our battery tray. All right, so we're on our final day here, I think on our Super Bandit. Uh, last night I did a little bit of siliconing, so we just put a bead in between the tanks and the front section here. 
Um, I didn't put any silicone yet on this section. I may just do a fine little, uh, I may do a fine little bead here of silicone between those two, but everything's really tightly held in place. And then I don't want to flip this over right now, but where this um, contacts the front duct, I also put some on there as well too. And I put some on this joint on the underside of, the, uh, of this whole assembly. So everything's nice and solid now. Silicone, of course, is super easy. If you need to take the, uh, the tanks out and take this all apart, as an example, you just take a razor knife and just cut it. Um, if you had any buried areas, you could use safety wire or fishing line to cut through it. But it's a nice, clean, simple way to hold those tanks in place. And of course, because it's black, it's basically invisible. So what we're working on now is our front door assembly and getting that finished up. So I've got to uh, kind of get things planned out here. Uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to plug our gear controller in and kind of just play with the servo and get that adjusted. And as I've mentioned previously, we are running the servos through the gear controller, not through the jetty system. Okay, so we got our door all programmed. Well, I had the, uh, the programming and stuff and everything already set up. I took the wings, I laid them out, and I programmed the doors as well. So just as a basic understanding here, I always work left to right, but in this case, what I'm doing is door number one on the gear controller is the front, and then door number two is the left, door number three is the right. So those are done now. So you can see there, the front door works perfect does what it's supposed to do, closes nicely and stays out of the way of everything, which is great. So I'm going to take my Dremel and we're just going to uh, shape this uh, G10 or fiberglass material that I put here. So we're going to keep that the way it is and we're just going to shave that down to a nice angle so it looks good and then we'll get that painted black as well. All right, so with our front door done, everything from this point uh, we have to kind of do systematically. You can see there the door is painted black. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work forward from the engine uh, forward. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the engine. Uh, we'll be able to repeat where this goes because now our bands and everything are set. So we're going to take the engine out and we are going to make our hole in the bottom for our fuel fitting. Now our actual fitting itself, we'll just pay attention to that, but our, uh, our line is right here. And I'm probably just going to come through a rubber grommet on the side of the bypass and go right into that fuel fitting. So that is what we're going to do. So we're going to start off with that. We don't have our bypass cover yet. That'll be coming soon. But we're going to pull the engine out, get the fuel line run, and then start working our way systematically forward. So after that, we're going to work on our wing connectors to get those run properly and out of the way of everything. And then we're going to put our uh, vent fitting here. We're going to get our vent lines sorted out. So just working through things systematically forward. Now the point of doing this and paying attention to the steps involved is number one, there's not a lot of room in this plane. It also prevents you having to take things out later on. So if you take, uh, you know, if you do something and you miss a, miss a step, then you have to start taking things out to redo it. So that's the whole point of it. Okay, so we got all of our wing wiring run forward here. Pretty straightforward actually went in between the tank and the um, the main spar and they both come out beside the intakes right there so we'll cover that a little bit more later on but that's where they come out on both sides so we've got some nice clear shots right to uh, the area that we need to go to and then more importantly if we flip the fuselage over you can see nothing is run in our air brake or even the underside of the fuselage. So when these get connected to the wings, the excess gets tucked in here and that is perfect. So I've left enough here so it'll just kind of dangle out of the fuselage, easy to connect. All right, so I installed the vent fitting right there. Now the reason we put it right there is really there's not a whole lot of room. I kind of wanted to keep it away from the intake so I kind of tucked it right there. Figured there would be probably the most amount of room. Now our vent line is just going to come straight up against this wall, go back to our T right here, and come from our, uh, our two saddle tanks. All right, everything in our back end is blacked out now. We use black Viton tubing on the vent. I uh, didn't have enough to do the whole thing, so we've gone with uh, the clear uh, Virilison clunk line from DreamWorks on the front portion and uh, we put snakeskin over top of our turbine wire. So when this gets covered, obviously the bypass cover goes over top. 
uh, and covers all the turbine. Uh, the only thing of color back here is the little blue Festo fitting, so that looks good. Um, so with everything run up front here, uh, we can start working on our install of our electronics. So I'm going to have the S-Spec sitting on that lower tray. Our wire is going to come forward. Actually, let me rearrange this. This wire is going to come forward to our XT60 plug-in for our battery. And then this junction right here is the junction that feeds the S-Spec and feeds the turbine. So this line will go into our data relay module for the turbine. So this is getting straight three cell LiPo voltage. And then our S-Spec is pulling power from the battery and that gets plugged into our uh, receiver system basically. So we're gonna make another MPX connector here and that MPX connector is going to have uh, the various um, servo plugs that are gonna go into the different devices. Now, because this is all common, we can power this in many different ways. So we could add three servo connectors on here as an example, and we can have one going into the, the Cortex. We can also use the LG C22 as our bus hub. So because we're not using our steering uh, system here, we could have power going into our steering system. So just a positive negative wire. So really doesn't matter where it goes in the system because everything's kind of interconnected but um, we just wanna make sure we've got options uh, on this plug right here. So I'm gonna get these guys soldered up and figured out, and then we will get our S-Spec installed in the tray. All right, so we are getting closer and closer on our install here, just doing little bits and getting stuff organized. So we've got our S-Spec uh, wired up and installed. You can see the zip ties holding it in place. I installed those zip ties previously when we uh, took the board out. Our plug-in is right there. So when I solder these guys, what I did was I pulled all the excess wire through here, soldered them, pull it back. Our clips that we use here, these XT60 clips that are available on our website, uh, they hold the, the, um, the battery plug, the XT60 plug, they actually click in place. So the battery plug doesn't come out. And then I pulled our excess wire and the excess wire is just underneath the S-Spec. We've got our Zycoy data relay module down there and uh, things are looking good. So very tight, but very organized. We've got all of our wires coming on this side of the fuselage. So we're gonna have, I've decided here, I think I might've talked about this previously, but our primary receivers up here, our clone's gonna go right there. So everything's nice and, and close on that side of the fuselage. And if we're worried about weight, this stuff's gonna offset the UAT, not that that really matters. Um, so next thing I'm doing is I'm getting our stuff plugged into our EXT port. I took our Zycoy telemetry module and shortened both ends. So these are the wires that I cut off. Rather than just bundling them up, we're gonna make them perfect length to fit where they need to go. So this end here gets plugged into the SPEC 30. This end here gets plugged into the Y cable that goes into the Zycoy data port. Now that's all gonna be covered. But what we do, the reason for the Y cable is one of our Ys is gonna come up and be available for us to plug in a GSU like this guy right here, which shows us the same information and allows us the same adjustability as the screen does. So, and then this just gets uh, Velcroed to the side, right like that. All right, just giving you progressive updates here. So kind of sorting things out, we've got our uh, LGC22 mounted with two small screws and we've got our clone mounted here with Velcro and we have only one thing that's getting plugged into the clone or right now this is our second receiver. We have our M-speed sensor mounted there and then our line is hidden underneath our canopy mount all the way down. So just systematically working through things. Also put shoe goop on all of our connectors down there because we are going to lose access fairly soon. All right, so here's our wire setup for our gear and control system. So we'll just put three ends on here and I just put three on there. We may only use two, but at least we got three as options. I mean, I'm sure we can find, find open plugs to put three of those guys in. So. Anyways, we're gonna get our ends put on there and another big step complete. All right, so we've got all of our wires run through the opening there. Now this is a lot of wiring, but we're all gonna 
we are gonna shorten these guys down to be just long enough. So last thing I did here was I put our extension on for our GSU to plug into. And uh, this is gonna be fastened somewhere in this area. I'm not entirely sure yet, so we'll just keep that up out of the way. But I think that's pretty much everything now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna fasten the tank down, but I am going to take our fuel tank, get it in place. We're just gonna have it sitting there and uh, then we'll start working on wiring. The reason I want the fuel tank in place is to kind of just make sure everything's gonna work. So once we're happy with the wiring and everything, then we will finalize our fuel tank installation. And it's time for another episode of Tip Time, and this Tip Time is brought to you by Trusty Bent Screwdriver. All right, this Tip Time is on doing servo ends. So, as I mentioned in our earlier build videos of this aircraft, I said that I kind of do it half and half. So half of the time I will do my ends like this, where I'm adjusting the length to be perfect, and the other half, when I'm dealing with like a big sports plane, I'll just leave them long. I know where everything's going and we've got room to hide stuff. Well, when I'm doing them like this, you wanna make sure you've got something to catch your clippings. If you look in the bottom of this, I emptied this before I started and you can see all the little pieces of copper. When you strip the sheathing, there's always a couple pieces of copper that come off, um, strands of wire. Well, you don't want those strands of wire to end up in your electronics. That's an important thing. So I'll put my bin in there, strip them. I spin them with my fingers to make them nice and tight. And then I'll pull my bin out and crimp those guys in. So little tip there for you. Thanks, Trusty. That's a good one. And uh, we're almost done with our servo leads here. So we've got all of our servo ends done on the uh, this side. We've got our two leads, gear and brake lead. Uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to shoe goop our connectors going into the gear controller. So all I do in this case is take trusty, a little bit of shoe goop on the end, and we just go through and install it on our servo leads. So you don't need much, just a little bit is perfect. Um, it does the job very well, and we just make sure that we're uh, fastening the connectors to each other and also to part of the board there. And then if you do have to take these guys out, they're pretty simple. They just pull straight out and you can peel the shoe goop off as needed. There we go. So that's gooped. Now we're ready to install our upper board. All right, and there she is all connected and looking beautiful. So um, everything worked out good. I just powered it up and all is well. I had to make a couple changes on my programmable ports, my E1 and E2, just flipping flipping them around for, uh, for orientation and stuff, but uh, that all worked out good. So essentially the way the power system here works is you've got, um, from your S-Spec, the EXT port provides power. So that's providing power to the main primary receiver. We've got another power lead coming to the Cortex right here. We've got another power lead going into our clone. Now, of course, we've got a lead going from our clone to our primary. We've got a lead going from our primary to our cortex. So basically, this is all working in one big loop system and uh, everything's getting power. It's like having one big power bus all set up. So it uh, works out well and uh, everything worked good. So I, I turned it on. Um, the gyro initiated, that was all good. The rear servos and surfaces are working. I uh, didn't do anything beyond that, I just turned it off. Uh, we did add our remote receive, um, on off switch, which is an R3, that's added in right there. And uh, that is what allows us to turn our plane on now from the radio. So we flick a switch on the radio, that sends a signal to the R3. The R3 turns on the SBEC 30, which powers everything. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at mounting our antennas. All right, so we've got everything buttoned up as far as the electronics install goes. Just got our hatches fit here and she turned out very nice. So we've got still lots to do. 
but I just wanted to give you an overview shot there of what it looks like with everything off. Okay, so main hatch here needs to come off first, otherwise the canopy doesn't come off. So the canopy is, I mean, if you've, if you've built one of these before, you know this, but the canopy won't slide backwards while the hatch is on. So uh, the other thing here is when we did all of our fitting of our hatches and everything, um, that really was an important step because our joints are very, very tight. So to pull our hatch off, it's one side, other side. Uh, the other thing that we did a little bit different than the kit recommends is we put our latches on the fuselage side, not on the hatch side. Reason for that is when you go to install this every single time, if you have the latches on the hatch side, your little tab's always gonna be hitting the fuselage and it's gonna make a mark there. With the way this is designed, it doesn't wreck the, um, the fuselage. So that's the back end. Obviously we're waiting on our bypass cover. Uh, front hatch comes off, no problem. Just charging batteries right now. That's going to do our test runs here. So we're getting that done. But we've got all of our antennas installed, all of our electronics installed. So our primary receiver, this one right here, this Rec 7, we've got one antenna right there pointing forward and backwards. The second antenna is perpendicular to that uh, right underneath the front here. Uh, the, right now, the second receiver, which is going to be the clone, one of those antennas is right on this side, uh, right inside here, pointed straight up and down. And the other antenna is at a 45 degree angle like that. So all of our axes are covered and looks good. Really happy with the install. Uh, the GSU plug here, we're just gonna tuck this off to the side, and uh, but it's marked as GSU. So if you need to plug in the data relay module for the engine and get access to it, that's where it's gonna plug in. So as of right now, we'll just leave that flopping out because we need to plug it in for our first run up. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get the plane over on a stand. We're gonna get the wings installed and we will do the first fully assembled gear cycle on the plane. So let's get that thing put together and we'll be back in a second. So one of the first things we wanna do before we start messing around with everything is we wanna get our UAT full. So the filter elements in here, you always wanna keep them under fuel. You don't wanna take uh, fuel out and have it completely dry because what happens is air bubbles sit in there. So this is the standard fueling setup that we use on David's planes. And uh, so this is how things are going. And we've just hooked it up to our fueling system from RC Custom 3D Printing. And we're just gonna put enough fuel in there to fill up the UAT so it's full and uh, we'll go from there. All right, wings are bolted on for the first time. And uh, definitely a bit of a different system with this uh, BVM style. So you've got the square shaft or rectangle shaft that goes in this receiver. Uh, we're using our metal receiver, of course. And then you've got four big bolts on the front that go into the main spar. But you have really good access to everything here. And now it, it definitely makes sense why these little uh, slots here are absolutely critical. So. Um, with that done, we can now get our bottom hatch installed for our test runs, and then we'll flip this guy over. All right, so gear check. Uh, initially, we started this up and it worked fine, but the mains were reversed. So what we did was we flipped the plugs around on the gear controller, so the polarity for the two mains is reversed compared to the front. So now everything is cycling like it should, so here is the operation. Now we do have slightly different timing on all the gears, so it goes motor one, two, three, so they're not all pulling load at the same time. But they are working perfect. Okay, so we've got our gear cycled, that's good. Um, what we're gonna do now is our UAT is full, obviously. So we're gonna do our CG check with our UAT full. So we're gonna get this on the ground, and then we are going to set up our RCCG machine. So first of all, hopefully the nose stays down, which uh, it's close. Once the hatches are on, it'll be a little bit better, so. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put our CG tool together from RCCG machine. I love this tool. It's such a huge time saver for doing the center of gravity on any aircraft, and the BVM Super Bandit is no exception. 
All right, so there we go with our CG. We've added uh, one and a half strips of lead in the nose. Now our battery that we have in there right now is 340 grams, and the one that we're gonna be using in the aircraft is 300, so we'll compensate by adding 40 extra grams compared to the lead we already have. So that is our weight right there and our measurements. And those measurements are also, um, they're nine inches back from the leading edge of the wing. So that's an aggressive rearward CG compared to what the stock is. And our final weight on this aircraft with UAT full, no fuel in the tanks, 23.72. So great weight, we're nice and balanced on the mains, almost identical weights, 0.67 on the nose. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna check out our fuel capacity using our fuel jug. So we will fill this guy up, see how much fuel it holds, and then we're gonna get ready to do a test run. Okay, so we've got our fuel system filled here, and thanks to the help of our, our, our fuel system from Joe at RC Custom 3D Printing, we know, well, that's not exactly how much goes in there. It was actually 3.5 bang on, but I added some more to our overflow tank. Now, one of the things I'll do in this case is because we have blacked out tanks, we've got blacked out fuel line here. So I filled this until fuel started coming out of the T and the vent line, checked our number on our fueler system, and then I kept fueling and pinched off our vent lines. And what that does is just confirms that both of our tanks are indeed full. So when you pinch off one, you should see fuel still coming out of the vent, not a whole bunch of air. If you saw a whole bunch of air coming out of one side, you know that one side filled, one side didn't. So I confirm that both sides fill perfectly. So it is time to make some noise with this engine. Now one interesting thing to think about is that little plane there has the same size engine as that big plane. The Rebel Pro. Okay, so as we go through this, we're just going to go through our normal procedure. We're going to start it up. We've primed the fuel system to the engine. Uh, we've adjusted our fuel capacity. Um, the engine, I'm assuming, is going to start on the first start. We haven't run this engine yet. We're going to let the idle stabilize. We're going to go to max throttle. We did turn the restart function on as well, so we'll do that and uh, hopefully have a good test run with no crazy events. Here's the first startup. We did prime the fuel system, but there was a little bit of bubbles in the fuel system, so we may have to do it again. So yeah, there's lots of bubbles in the fuel system, so we're going to go in and adjust that. Now remember that we did rotate this engine slightly, uh, about two minutes off counterclockwise, so that could have an effect, but I think it was just air in the fuel system.
So that's going to be bubbles in the fuel system. So obviously everything's off the plane now. We've been doing some fitting with our flaps. The flaps on the Super Bandit are a bit of a pain in the butt because you get the flaps all set up and they don't actually work without doing a little indent on the fuselage. So that's done, not a big deal, but uh, definitely required to make those flaps work. And we're just doing our little tip skids for our elevator and our wing tips. We're making those out of very thin G10 material. So these guys right here. So we'll put these on uh, both of those wingtips and elevators. Uh, we're gonna use shoe goop to hold them down and that'll be a good way to fasten them. And then we can paint them afterwards, uh, either black or red or whatever to fit where they're, uh, they're located. I think both of the underside of the wingtips and the elevator tips are both black. So that's gonna be very simple. 
And regarding the engine run, I totally forgot to mention anything about the engine run. Obviously you guys saw it, ran very well. Initially it did the first restart because there was tons of air in the system. So that's why you want to keep your UAT always full of fuel. So once you get that air out, you're good. Um, and that's why you always want to do a full throttle run up before you go flying. So I do that before every single flight. So anyways, the Zykoi 195 ran amazing. That is going to be a ridiculous amount of power for that plane. Crazy, crazy amounts of power. It was a lot. So anyways, let's, uh, continue on getting these uh, these tip skids sorted out. Okay, so we're just putting the wings back together here. One little change we made on the flaps was we actually put washers in between our hinge points. Now what that did was it brought our flaps in just a little bit, which minimized the amount of uh, indent we needed to make on the fuselage. So what happens here on the flaps is they move at an angle this way and you can see there, so now the flap is sticking out past the wing versus when it's down, it's essentially flush or it was flush before we added the washers. So this is really what you need to deal with on this kit. Um, we did have some room here because we had some room in between our aileron and our flap. So anyways, that kind of worked out well and also minimized the amount of um, groove we needed to add to the fuselage. So that is a good change. Um, we are going to put our wingtip skid on this one. We did the other one already. And if you put a good amount of shoe goop on there, we actually don't need to paint it because it's going to, uh, the G10 material shows through and our shoe goop completely filled the entire area. Uh, the excess coming past, that'll just rub off once it's cured. Like it's, uh, it dries and you just peel it off and that'll be perfect. So no painting needed on those guys. All right, so one of the other things we have here is, hopefully this will show up. I think I can get it on camera. Um, that's a little clear coat touch up that I did. So there was a little bubble in the clear coat. Um, I could have left it, but I wasn't happy with it. So I picked at it, got it off and uh, did a little bit of sanding. Then I just took a Q-tip with some 2K clear and touched this area up. Now that was a couple days ago. And uh, so we're gonna let that dry a little bit longer. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand this out with uh, very fine grit sandpaper. And then we're just gonna buff the clear coat in this front section. Um, so that's a little tip there for you. You know, don't worry about it. If you uh, get a little nick in your clear coat, it is fixable. Um, so anyways, I'll show you guys the final result once we're done there. It's pretty straightforward stuff. You just get that sanded down. Uh, it's gonna look like crap at first cause it'll look like you're wrecking the finish. And then when you buff it out, it uh, disappears. Well guys, the, uh, the bypass cover has arrived for the Super Bandit, so we can wrap this up. And uh, I'll tell you, Jeremy, um, thank you so much for doing this bypass cover. It looks phenomenal. So he did an absolutely stunning job on this bypass cover. Uh, it finishes this plane off so nicely, <laughs> so cool. Awesome, so that is wonderful. So if we take a look at the bypass cover and how it sits in here, basically the name goes forward. Now we've got to cut our ears out uh, or our little slots for the ears. And they've got a kind of a cutout done up on the bypass. So we're gonna get that done first. So do a little bit of chopping here to get those done. And uh, we may have to do a bit of a cutout here for the turbine wire, but what we'll probably do is put that in the uh, in the lower bypass section if we can and avoid cutting the top section if possible. And uh, basically once this is fit 100%, then we need to put some BVM ceramic paint on the back section to match up with what we've done on the pipe. So I'm going to uh, get my Dremel out. We're going to start doing a little bit of uh, light sanding on this thing and get her fit. All right, so we sanded down our slots here for the bypass. Uh, we used a small O-ring to, uh, I'll show you the O-rings we're using here to hold the bypass down. We're gonna put another one on there, but we gotta take the bypass off, but that works beautiful. So these are the O-ring kits that we're using. I just got them from Home Depot. Uh, there's a big O-ring, which is too big, and then two of these small guys, which is perfect for the bypass. And then I just put a slot here in the front of the, uh, the carbon portion or the main portion of the bypass. And that is where our wire runs through. I didn't want to uh, start marking up the, uh, the cover. So that is so good, so good. 
Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take the cover off. We're going to sand down the back area and we're going to paint it with some ceramic paint. All right, so we've sanded down the back portion of the bypass here, cleaned it up with some rubbing alcohol, put our piece of tape across, and we're just going to uh, put four layers of BVM heat shield ceramic paint over top of this area. So basically putting a coat on, letting it dry, repeat three more times and that will be good. We're avoiding the perimeter there. Uh, this stuff's fairly abrasive. So we're just doing the area that's actually exposed to the turbine. This area here overlaps the uh, main portion of the bypass. All right, so last thing we're gonna deal with here is our little touch up that I showed you guys previously. So uh, it's been about a week or so and our clear coat is all uh, solid and cured and everything. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take some, some 2000 grit sandpaper and we're just gonna sand this flush. So what we wanna do is, is essentially make this flat. It's very important you don't sand through the clear coat. That's the thing is we're just getting rid of the height here and when this is done, I'll show you guys, it's gonna look terrible and then you buff it out and it's gonna look perfect. So, so I use my little sanding block here with some 1000 grit on it and we kind of knocked the area down and then I took my 2000 and sanded it out. Now we've got just a little bit left to do. You can kind of see the shiny spot of the clear coat that I uh, did previously. So I'm gonna give that just a little bit more sanding and then this is ready to buff. All right, so I'll just show you what we're using here. Um, so this is the product we use. Uh, I get it from our automotive place here. And uh, this is the stiff foam pad. I've run this over just a couple revolutions here and you can see already that it has started to polish up the marks. We still have some marks here. Um, so we're just gonna keep going with the polisher, but I'll show you guys the steps. Okay, so don't have to go crazy with it. I've got it turned down all the way and I'm just feathering the trigger. Wipe it down and see how that looks. Oh, she's very close. Very close. We've got a little bit more to do. And there we go. Awesome. I'm gonna do a bit more right there and I'll show you guys what it looks like. And there we go. So the clear coat touch up is all complete. Can't even tell there was a spot there before. All right, so we have got our four coats of heat shield on the, uh, the bypass there. And that is what it looks like in place. Well guys, that wraps up the crazy journey with this BVM Super Bandit aircraft. Uh, what a crazy project. Definitely don't wanna do too many of these in a year. Uh, the amount of hours on this thing was astronomical. We finished off at 249 hours to complete this aircraft, and that doesn't include painting. So uh, just a crazy amount of time. It turned out stunning. I Hopefully you guys feel the same way. I know the owner absolutely loves it. He hasn't even seen it in person yet. He obviously he's seen all the videos and pictures and everything, but uh, in a few days we are driving down to Tucson and we will be delivering this aircraft to the owner and getting to see it fly at Tucson Jets. So really looking forward to that. We did a lot of this project on our Lighter Side of RC After Dark channel. The Lighter Side of RC After Dark is a separate channel where we do live streams here from the shop, usually every two weeks for about two hours. And you get to see the behind the scenes stuff, which you don't always get to see on the regular channel and the struggles and the joys and it's tons of fun. My favorite thing about the lighter side of RC After Dark is interacting with you guys, having you on the chat, asking questions, uh, interacting on there is tons of fun. So thanks guys for joining us in this journey 
and we will see you in the next video.